we'll have this discussion. Discussion? What discussion? This is a discussion. Coming to you from Denver, Colorado. This is Discussion Combustion Podcast with your hosts, Kevin Batstone and Arthur Raw. You know, when you spend a lot of time around somebody, you start to be like, hmm. You, you figure out, like, how to get under each other's skin. <laughs> yeah. And I think we've or gotten like pretty good peeves. at that. The pet peeves. Um, what would be a big pet peeve that I have? I was just going to say, let's know. go back to the, like, pet peeve thing specifically. What is each other's pet peeves? Like, in general? Just, just like, specifically overall? Specifically about each other. Well, about each other? Like, I'm, oh, I'm just getting right to it. Huh. Okay, no, that's that's an interesting discussion. Let's see. What drives me nuts about art? Um, <laughs> 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 I don't know. I, I that's a that's a good question because you know you do kind of drive me nuts sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, probably just the way we talk to each other sometimes. You know, we get very like bossy uh-huh. we're, and we're so competitive. Like, who's going to get to the studio first? Who's yeah. going to do more who's work? Working harder, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like I'm outworking you. But today he got to the studio before me. Correct. And okay. so he got to outwork me today, which that's I right. really like that. Mm-hmm. I like it. Yeah. Well. So one of my pet peeves with Kevin, I already know. Yeah, like it's, he's a, there's like I'm gonna get right to it. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's your it's your messy snacking, your yeah. messy yeah. snacking habits. That'll drive some people nuts. So are you oh. like that person that just chews with your mouth open, or no. like super loud, obnoxious? No, I'm like a wood chipper. When I eat pork rinds or having a snack here at the studio with oh, my cold beer. Oh, you're like not in the front? No, I mean, it's just, I don't know what it is. It ends up all over the front of me. I'm like an old man, Cassie. <laughs> when, when, like when crumbs you snack. all the way down and, your and then clothes. I, and then they fall on the floor and Arthur just loses his mind. I'm like, come on, man. Can we clean this up? Like, we're going to have a guest in soon. But see, the technique that you have to do is while you take the bite, you also like suck in with it. No, I right? think. Right? So it's like. <laughs> Y- you, There's you like, like a whole technique. Yeah. There's That's a whole much. thing to it. That's too much for me. I like to just send it and I'll clean it up later. Because uh, <laughs> I'm a pretty clean guy. You know, I like to run a tight ship. I'll sure. make a mess I and then mean, clean it up. I don't know that about you, but I'll take your word for <laughs> I'll, it. I'll say the toothpick debris. That's uh, oh, it's, toothpick it's, it's debris. flabbergasts me. I'll find it in my car. Like, it'll yeah. just turn up. But, like, in his defense, mm-hmm. you know, you, but, you quit, what, chewing? Yes. Did. And you took toothpicking to favor and that's yes. everything yes. yes so if you if he leaves a couple of toothpicks around it's fine what you have to realize is it's coming from a good place him bettering himself and arthur you should be more supportive to that yeah yeah i, I could be i could be actually i'll eat some of his toothpicks too he, he, yes he will and i'll See, tell you this he has them right there in his pocket these mint. are the ones guys uh the the tea tree therapy mint toothpicks got me off chewing backer uh well i would say got me off of it really helped kind of fill yeah. in that that i've been chewing these for almost 10 years Okay. Wow. They've re- they've really helped a lot. So you know when I'm feeling that urge, you know, because I drink beer, obviously, and you know, I throw a toothpick in there, it kind of takes that urge away a little bit to want to do do dipping. So mm. when did you officially stop? Like when was your last dip? Well, see, that's where it gets dicey because sometimes I'll still dance with the devil a little bit. Ooh, that's not good. Yeah, know? but it's rare. It's like dangling the meat in front of that tiger. You know. That's true. It's- it's, it's, it's rare. Every once in a while, I get risky. around a guy that's like, oh, you know, I'm like, let me get one of those. You know, maybe after a couple too few many. Uh-huh. But you don't go buy a can after. No, I don't like, buy a can after. I, I feel like you have some good self control. Every once again, yeah. I'll, I'll put it in there and then I get ripped off that nicotine. I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't like that. So do you go to like to the snus if you're gonna do that? Like, is it just like you want to just take it easy, just do a little pouch kind of deal, or is it like the full horseshoe? Dip, that's, that's where I started. Like all or nothing. That's where I started playing, you know, baseball and stuff like that. Okay. That's where I got into it. But then yeah. when the pouches came baseball, out, yes, yeah, that's that's kind uh-huh. of some of my background. But and then when the pouches came out, I went to those because they're cleaner. I wouldn't have as much debris as I like to call it <laughs> uh, in in the mouth. Debris, right? Yeah. All about the debris. You got to get the debris out of there. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I do know that Kevin, one of his pet peeves with me, yeah. is probably like I, I get a little touchy feely with him sometimes. Oh, that's a good point. Oh, and, and that's I, sweet. I want to like give yeah. him hugs and stuff. He does, and yeah. I'm not. Arthur's I'm not, a hugger. Yeah. He's a very sweet man. He's just like a big old teddy bear. Inside, he really is. You know? He's got such a heart of love. I mean, when we, when we were down in Phoenix, Arizona, a couple weeks ago for the NASCAR championship, pops was there, and and you know, Dad and I are handshakers, mm-hmm. me and Dad, and and Art's like, well, can I have a hug? And so he hugged my father. I did while that I gave to you on the way in today. That's true. That's true. I'm you not know. a handshaker if I can be a hugger. I, I can I appreciate am. a hug here and there, but, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes Art, you just, uh, he wants to come in and give me that, that bear I, hug. I, I want to give you a, a good embracing two-armed hug, eight seconds, yeah. and, and, like, that way we can get, get those good endorphins. He's a genuine. Oh, for know? 100%. That, we just call him the genuine. He's the genuine Arthur Raw. Yeah, yeah, I actually dropped an album. It was called The Genuine Article. Stop it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Yeah. This is a fact. That was a while back. I have, wow. a, I have yeah. a signed copy. Oh, yeah. oh, a signed copy. Yeah. Fancy. Yeah, Do you yeah. have it, like, framed in one of those little, like, I should. shadow boxes at home? <laughs> I wall? should. In the hallway? Yeah, right over my, mm-hmm. uh, this house is protected by the Second Amendment, and then Arthur's <laughs> right above it. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, what what are some of your pet peeves then? Oh, geez. Um, probably something similar as to messy eating. Like when somebody just eats completely with their mouth open. It's loud. They like smack. They're all over the place. They're talking in the middle of it. It's just messy. It's a lot. But then I became more educated because I'm a dental hygienist, mm-hmm. right? So, I became more educated in the fact that people actually can't breathe through their nose. So it became more of a deviated septum or like more of a ENT, like ear, nose and throat situation where nobody just chooses to be that person who eats, you know, or chews with their mouth open. It's actually Mm -hmm. um, an oxygen like deficiency. Like it's actually something they need to get checked out. Interesting. For Mm -hmm. people that chew with their mouth open, you're saying like it could Mm -hmm. be. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just it doesn't come by nature like for your if you're sleeping for example right you would naturally be laying down in bed and breathing through your nose mm-hmm. but the people who have to breathe with their mouth open it's not like that's normal for the body it's not comfortable it's because your body's like actually fighting for oxygen hmm. and it's another way of doing it when your nose isn't like supplying that for you that's interesting I yeah guess so I-, I guess if you're a mouth breather like you should maybe consider that a little bit. There's a lot of mouth breathers. Look into it. Yeah. And it's it's always alarming when you see folks like eating mm-hmm. and then you can just tell like they're really into it and then they have to stop to take a breath. Like they're they're just munching away and then they're all <sighs> and then they go back to munching. You know, I've never actually noticed that. Oh, I've and seen And now it. I'm just going to be like eagle eye on people in the next I, like I like doing people watching. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the mall. The mall or the, the airport. airport. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, I was the air- I was just yeah. at the airport 2 weekends ago. So yeah, were we. Yeah, so were we. We were uh-huh. down in Phoenix, Arizona, having some fun. Mm-hmm. What were you guys doing in Phoenix? NASCAR championship. Yeah. I was being the videographer oh. for Mash the Gas podcast. Which is my NASCAR's show. podcast. Yeah, NASCAR's mm-hmm. podcast. That's mm-hmm. correct. Wow. Hosted by myself and Jeff Davis out of Dallas, Texas. He's a wild man. <laughs> it was fun, Jeff. He's a wild man. It was fun man. meeting you. I have a it's rug burn from meeting you, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay, I do need to hear more about that. If you're just going to throw that out there willy-nilly. Oh, um, well, we, we did, you know, a little bit of wrestling. We were getting to know uh, each other, yeah. and, you know. and, and <laughs> Just and, cowboy stuff, really. Yeah, that's, that's how you get to know people sometimes is you mm. gotta you gotta wrestle yeah you know and, he's and a big boy it out. Mm-hmm. okay was there alcohol involved in this situation heavily yes. absolutely yes. that's heavily. what i was thinking that's nascar cassie i mean, <laughs> I mean it's beer it's whiskey it's 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 you know boot yeah. scooting good time mm-hmm. it was, it was sure. a lot of fun that was my first uh official race like i've been to qualifying before and you went to the championship yeah it was epic we got to go walk on pit road and do all like we did everything with these media passes like nice uh, I, 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 I mean you, you guys you know just flash this little media yeah. pass and you just can get any Anywhere, that's right? true mm-hmm. yeah you just I mean, act like you legit. belong there you don't even need a pass to be honest i mean i've that's done that point. plenty of times at concerts yeah that's yeah. that hashtag own it yeah <laughs> when you full own it just act like you belong that's and you everybody belong. else it. you do is, belong. is inconveniencing you yes you know and then you get where you need to go yes yeah. <laughs> when you show up and you're like i need to be you know i need to get through here you don't even say those things yeah. it's the energy you bring to it is what does it mm-hmm. right because if you yeah. bring too much attention to it people get a little bit apprehensive and they're like well i don't know that energy is going to be picked up on by maybe the security officer, whoever's sitting there, and they're going to be like, "No, you can't, mm-hmm. you can't come in here." Yeah, country concert, trying to get backstage. Who'd you get? You just who'd tell, you see? I think it was well, so it was Country Jam. Mm. So it was a little bit of a blur at that point, right? Because we had been having a good time, but I had told uh, the bouncer that I was dating the drummer. And he's like, well, okay, where's your pass? Like, where's your wristband? I guess it was supposed to be lime green. You're like, oh, yeah. I left it back there. No, yeah, I just told him. I was like, yeah. I don't have it on me right now. Like, what do you want me to do? I need to get in the back, like, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, sorry, ma'am. Like, I just can't let you in. And I thought it was, like, over. And I was like, no, this isn't over. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go, like, one last try on this. I was like, that's fine if you're not going to let me through. But you're going to have to deal with him later. And if you upset him about it later, then that's on you. Like, yeah. I tried to help you. And that's um, it worked, so I got to go in the back. I toured their buses all on my own. <laughs> their buses. <laughs> you just went walking really into them. Straight up, all their what are they like? Travel buses? What are they? Coach. Tour buses. Yeah. Coach. It's tour bus. Tour bus. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. their tour buses, granite. Like everything's pristine. Everything sparkles. Everything smells nice. Like brand new leather. Wow. I mean, it's like a new car dealership when you walk in those and they're huge massive they don't even look all that big on the outside but you get inside and you're like this is 
two New York apartments like combined. I, I would love to do that at some point, like just live a month on one of those buses and mm-hmm. being creative because you know that they're writing songs on there and oh yeah, they're yeah. Doing well they're doing a lot of things on those yeah. buses that we probably will never know about. It'd but probably be a blast. We have an idea. But yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then, uh, yeah, I just got to go um, backstage, and I watched the whole concert from the side of the, the stage. And it was a really, really great um, experience. And I kind of find the older I get, the more experiences I like to have alone. And mm-hmm. I know that sounds kind of weird, but um, the more stuff that you try to find confidence in and you just go and enjoy in your own, um, on your own time, in your own, like, little adventure – I think there are sometimes the best memories and you grow the most from them. Yes. Because um, you have to like be brave, right? You have to be really brave to do those things. A hundred percent agree. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it is really enjoyable because I mean, even just going out and getting meals by yourself Yeah. and there's, a, there's something to that, like that independence and how, how good that feels. Yeah. yeah. Going to a movie alone. Like when was the last time? Did, have you ever, Kevin? Oh, I love doing things alone. I okay, mean, see? I've done movies alone. So honestly, when it comes to NASCAR, I've done more NASCAR races alone that I've enjoyed more than I have with like bringing people. Yeah, see, and just kind of like showing up alone, like especially a girl going to a bar. Mm-hmm. That's my favorite because everybody starts to panic for you. So at first, nobody wants to talk to you because they just know your guy's coming and he's going to sit right next to you, right? Mm-hmm. And then a little bit of time goes on and then you can tell like the bartender starts to get a little bit nervous but doesn't really say anything quite yet. And then finally, after like maybe a drink, they come around and they're like, hey, like, did something happen? Are That's you so okay? Odd. They never approach me like that. No, Why don't every they? single time they yeah. will ask you, are you okay? Did something happen? Did you get stood up? And they'll straight up like be concerned huh. for you. Mm. And you're like, no. Just came here alone. Just I'm hanging out. Just an individual coming to a bar by myself. Yeah. yeah. Because it's kind of freeing to not have like those social stigmas because that's exactly what it is, right? Yeah. Like why can a man do it and a girl can't? Yeah. So that is a good point. And and mm-hmm. typically who are the people asking these questions? Is it the bartenders? Is it the staff? Is it the guys that are shooting pool? Who yeah. is it? Yeah. The guys that are shooting pool are t- too nervous to talk to you about it. That's just like too much awkward conversation for them. So okay. that'll be never something that they just like come up to you and talk to you about. Um, ironically, I met Arthur at a bar. Oh, wow. <laughs> and um, he and I just, like, could talk right away. And it was comfortable. It was no big deal. Um, but that's not usually the case, right? People are a little bit more shy. Um, but I it's mean, like, you're, you're not shy, though, at all. I mean, I guess. <laughs> no, I, I like that. It's like, it's, like the, it's, like the, it's like the country girl in you. Yeah, I'm like some, I'm a like little, some of those yeah, valley, down it, down to earth. Like yeah. get get a little dirty, just get right to business. Yeah. I'll tell you exactly how I feel, whether you like it or not. That's good. Um, I try not to come off like too too much, too rude. But you know what? If I have an opinion, why can't we talk about it? Right? Yeah. Even if it yeah. differs, let's talk about it. Let's you know like shoot the shit. You know. No, That's I love it. I love that. So mm-hmm. going and seeing though movies by yourself is almost critical because. Like critical, it's critical, critical. because okay. some, some people will be talking and, and like yeah. gossiping next to you. And you're just like, guys, I'm trying to watch this. So I went and you saw mean like it's like their the first Batman. date or like they're like two best friends or what? Like going with my boys okay. sometimes. Like, so I, your boys are just chit chatting. next yeah. to you. And I'm like, I would just rather be <laughs> alone. Yes. I feel the same way when I go to NASCAR. I mean, you can't hear anything anyway. So the communication that's out. Oh, that's a good point. You I know, didn't even think of that. And then you got this guy who disappears at the Xfinity Championship. He's gone for I an hour. I disappear everywhere, I was right? He was marketing, to be fair. We're the same people. Are we we the just same really people? are the same people. I can see that. Yeah. I can see people that. People are people. Yeah. <laughs> people are people. You know, I, I'm like, I'm very like, we got to be here yeah. at this time. We got to do uh-huh. this from this time to that time. Like, let's go. Mm-hmm. Art disappears at the Xfinity Championship on Saturday, which is like the rookie yes. race. I'm okay. like, where did he go? And, and my co-host from Mash the Gas and I are looking at each other like, we're calling him, we're well, texting him. Well, I saw him. him an hour ago with this person, but then like 45 minutes after that, I saw him with this person. They're two completely different locations, like two completely different groups of people, right? That's just the way we work. Mm. My friends know if we go to a big bar, you're going to lose Cassie. That's just, it <laughs> is what it is. That's how I'm gonna it is. Meet, yeah, I'm going to meet like three or four different groups of people. We'll become friends. We'll now become like a big old group of friends. And it is what it is. So... Yeah, our co from Happy Friday, Jonathan Ekstrom, yeah. super solid lad legend, uh, got to learn that live action when we right. went to the Frickashina show two weeks ago. The what show? Yes. It, uh, the Frickashina is, oh. is a punk rock band here in Denver, Colorado. Mm. They do our theme song for Happy Friday. Mm. We went out to support it. They played it live. And by the end of the night, John, cool. John was getting ready to leave. He Irish goodbyed 
Arthur. Yeah, he, I, didn't, he didn't. I was just in the alley. But like, but and, yeah. I, and and so John had to learn how Arthur Raw works. And he's busy, you know. He yeah. takes over the room. He's 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 networking. He's handing out stickers. He's trying to get <laughs> folks involved. That's what they call it. Yeah. You know, and and so John's like, I'm leaving. Yeah. You know, John had to learn that live action, and now he understands. Well, you know, I, I love John, and it's it's okay. I can I can be fine without a goodbye. He's he, so he Irish goodbye to you. Just me. Yeah. Okay. Sadly enough, though, I'm gonna say like full guilt. I did that this last weekend at a wedding. Uh oh. So I was a bridesmaid. Okay. okay. Spent a whole weekend at a wedding in Colorado Springs. I am so honored to be a bridesmaid, right? Yet again. Always a bridesmaid, never a bride. <laughs> and um, I just got to the point where I was, like, so tired of being out yeah. and about with people. Like, I love being social, but I also love, like, having me time. And when you're, like, bunking with a like bunch of drunk girls, oh, it gets difficult. to the point where you're, like, done sharing right? a bed too yeah well yes and no i mean they're bunk beds they're like twins okay. like when was yeah. the last time you it felt like summer slept camp. yeah exactly summer camp so um you know it gets to the end of the wedding you know we've done the dancing we've done the cake we've done the presents or whatever like it's over so eventually i just say goodbye to the bride and then i'm out mm. right and so my friend texted me and she's like um like are you good is everything okay because i go? never do that mm -hmm. right because i'm always the last person to leave i always make sure i take care of everybody else but i was just like you know what for once i kind of want to be a little bit selfish and just leave and that was really awkward for me it was new what was awkward about it? I mean, because you, you said your Irish goodbye to all the, all the ladies there, right? So you're just, you just dipped. Well, just, I mean, really the whole wedding, right? So oh, wow. it's not like, I'm, I mean, I guess I said something to the groom and the bride. That mm. was yeah. the people who were most important to me, right? Of course. But in the same sense, I just don't want to be rude. I always feel like if I'm not taking care of, like, the people around me, making sure they're comfortable or they have what they need or whatnot, I mean, it can vary, right, um, that I'm being selfish. And I don't know, like where that place comes like within me you know mm -hmm. like where does that guilt come from i don't know or maybe i'm just like that person who always takes care of other people around me by nature but i don't know do you guys relate to this at all or am i just like out on a limb here no i i, I can i can relate to this and there is something satisfying about just being like all right that was my time yeah like i'm gone like i, I it's exhausting have you ever it, done that though like yes. i feel like you would struggle with that a lot too well because like you want to get into like these meaningful goodbyes like i'm all about like meaningful hey, goodbyes. yeah like like it's meaningful it was so good to see you share this experience with you and then it like turns into a five minute conversation and then you do that times 20 like you're you wanted to leave an hour ago and now it's like two hours later and you're still like saying goodbye to people and then like you see people that you already said goodbye to you're saying goodbye to somebody else and okay it's not that you know, bad you know what for I'm saying. me like i get down to it mm -hmm. like i'll be the first person who can like lead the group to the goodbyes so I'm okay with doing that. I mean, maybe I'm not quite that bad, <laughs> Arthur. That's bad. Is that bad? <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> I mean, how do you ever leave a place if you're like an hour and a half later still trying to leave? You, you leave sad because you didn't get to you say goodbye to, to that one person's that's grandpa. That's dramatic. Don't yeah. you think a little no, bit? I'm being <laughs> silly. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Uh, I mean, this is what I have to deal with all the time here with Mr. Ra. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I like to, when it's time to exit, I, I'm, I'm ready to go. So yeah, guys, see, he's yeah. you guys are so opposite. I know that's why it works though. Yeah, that is, it's true. Uh, uh, you know, that's opposites so attract, and and you know that's why Arth and I just work so well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Practic opposites practically definitely lovers. Yeah. yeah, they definitely do attract. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Tell me more about that. Your attraction to each other. Well, it all started with country <laughs> music for me, because I was I was into rap and hip hop, yeah. and he was into it's country and, and bluegrass, and yeah. uh, and we helped each other learn the ways. See, yeah, yes. I mean, those are very different worlds. So I just I this is question for you, Kevin. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that type of music now? About I, what kind of music? Rap, rap and, and hip hop. Hip -hop. I mean, so if so you really did let you experience his world. Like, how did you come around to that? Or did you ever? I, I certainly have. And I have so much respect for it because I love, you know, as an artist and a musician that I, yeah. I've spent time writing music. Oh, but you said it was country and rock band that you were used to Correct. being. Correct. Okay. But, but that gives me a level of, of love and appreciation for any musician, any artist that can, oh, that can well, put it true. out there. Okay. You're and coming so, from a very respectful point. Of course. I'm asking you, like down opinion on the music like how does it make you feel like what where are the feels coming from i think it makes me feel uh, excited as a matter of fact this this might come as a surprise and art's going to back me up on this but art is one of the best freestylers in in rap music i've ever heard and i can hang with him 
he, he can't. I'm I'm going to be honest. I have heard Arthur rap in his car before. <laughs> wow, there's a lot going on here that I'm learning, guys. <laughs> and it was, that was a good freestyle. Honestly, it was extremely impressive. Oh, he's At incredible. At first I thought, okay, this guy, he's going to rap. He's going to be probably fairly decent. No, he had me laughing my ass off in that car because everything was so clever. Yeah, he's good. And I just couldn't help but just be like, I respect, you know, mad respect. He like, is a ma- ma- master of his craft. He's got the MC on the chest. Yeah. I do. It's it's tatted here. He's got the I, MC I got on the chest. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah. Or does that mean you're like karaoke king or what does no, that mean? No, it, it means that I'm oh. the master of the ceremony and, and the <laughs> mic is over my chest because oh. that's like where my heart is. Yeah. And, and here I'm giving you a hard time about well, it, you know. It's no, coming no, from I, a really I, I, deep place. I like how you're like I like how you're poking fun at all yeah. this. This is no this is perfect. And um <laughs> no but like yeah music it like I was I've been doing that stuff since like, I was like eleven. So that's a part of it's like therapy. Like so tell you start us more about that like eleven years old. Yeah. That's a big deal. Like where did that come from? Like where did that I remember it was where you grew up. That's what you had said. Right? Yeah I grew up in, in Denver. Okay. But it was it was because I borrowed a Walkman, like one of the disc players from one of my friends back in the day. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, you could borrow this, and there was like this Tupac CD in there. Ooh, Tupac gets yeah. you every time, man. Yeah, it was it was the All Eyes on Me, the second yeah. disc. And when I started listening to that, like I just mm-hmm. I had this. All right, I can do that, and like I and honestly, it's like, it's a great way to express yourself. I mean, regardless, I feel like even people who play guitar or pianists and or whatever yeah. it is, like any dance, something that you can like really let your emotions like go out like pure energy. And like really just express like your mm. your feels. And I know that sounds pretty lame when I say that, but it is. It's like expressing your feels. Kevin, you said you played what guitar? Yep. Is that so, correct? Yeah, I was, a, I was a rhythm guitar player and lead singer for the Ridge Runners. Okay, so what kind of guitar though? Because I know there's like acoustic, there's electric, there's like bass, there's all these different mm. steel guitar, which is uh, my favorite. Okay. <laughs> steel guitar is amazing. <laughs> love the sound, love the respect for the yeah. artists that play them. It's, it's, it's yeah. an, incredible. It's we tried to f- find a steel guitar player to join our band and there just wasn't one because they're so uh, rare. They are. They're, they're so, so rare. rare. So I play a Martin, which is oh, okay. um, high end best guitar. Jamie Rourke, I know, is listening to this right now, and I know you're a Gibson guy, Jamie, but Martin <laughs> guitars are 100% the way to go. Acoustic, yeah. beautiful sound, rich. You know, rich, flavorful, just amazing sound. Dirk Bentley plays the one. He had a custom Dirk Bentley DB28 guitar with a Phoenix put right on on the neck. It looks amazing. Like an actual like photo of a Phoenix? No, no, like the Phoenix, like the bird. That's what I mean. Yeah. Like a, a well, I guess photo. I was meaning like not realistic, but like a picture. It's like a painted or drawn bird. out like yeah, yeah. Phoenix. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, fiery it's like obviously a, not like the realistic version you see on the side of the road, you know, when you're driving on a Tuesday. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, Martin Guitar is the way to go for sure okay. uh, for acoustics. That's my opinion. I'm not hating on Gibson. They're amazing guitars. I know yeah. Chris Stapleton's a big Gibson guy, but Martin. Okay. And, and Kevin, you're pretty sexy when you play the guitar Ooh, and sing. Ooh, see, here it's and, coming and, back and, to and that love connection and, and he's you guys just share. In, and he's just in his it's wife like a beater. different place for you and, guys. And then I'll, like, I'll like kind of get in there and start doing some freestyles yeah, while I'm he's... I'm sure you do. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. <laughs> so how do you release? Like, what is your release then? Like, you work so hard. You, like, work these 12-hour shifts. Like, what are you doing to, like, let it all out? That's a great question. I think it's, like changed over the years right like as you get older you enjoy less of the things you did when you were younger Mm -hmm. um i think for me it's new experiences so if i'm really wanting to like get down to who i am and like release like maybe some tension or depression even or anxiety um sometimes it's just about having like that new adventure for me um because i'm the type of person that loves new hobbies that like loves new experiences so sometimes i can go overboard with that and be like too into too many things and like run myself thin what would be an example of that oh my gosh so many things like i have obsessions about so many things how can you not like want to learn like fish plants animals like even things that are like about people psychology Mm -hmm. or um, places to travel or i don't know i mean i think just meeting people and like learning something new from them about a new topic isn't that like just the most beautiful, most like colorful moment you get in life? I can I agree know. with that. Yeah, I can too. I like like we talk about diversifying the portfolio a little bit, yeah. you know, knowing <laughs> knowing a little about a lot, those mm-hmm. kind of things. Uh, you mentioned fish. I'm a huge fish nerd. 
Mm-hmm. Art knows that. No, you're not. Yes, oh, yeah. He is. Stop it. African he's, cichlids. He's a fresh water master. You're a cichlid guy. So, Interesting. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you this about my cichlids. Okay, wait. Stop. First off, how many gallons are we working with? And how many tanks? Because every Aquarius <clears throat> knows there's not just one tank. Aquarius. So there, there's going to be a couple Sorry. layers to this this explanation. Um, uh-huh. my, my ex and I split up uh, in June, and we okay. had a 60 gallon, and we did South American cichlids in that tank. Okay. So Jack Dempsey's Texas mm-hmm. cichlids. Yes. Um, we had we had a couple other fish in there that survived amazingly. The skirt tank. survived. What does yeah. that mean? Like it was a question. Like, are you going to live? I don't know. Yeah, like, because I mean, with, with South America, as you know, as a fish nerd, yeah. South American cichlids are the most aggressive of freshwater fish. Oh, so you're thinking that they're going to eat each other? Well, they did. Yeah. They they killed oh, my wow. guppies. They Animals. killed my mollies. Well, those are community fish. You, that's yeah. where you messed up right then and there. Well, see, what you were really doing is just putting snacks in there. Well, no, no, no. See, what, <laughs> see, here's how it goes. <laughs> I started with guppies and mollies. Okay. Right, and then we put the cichlids in there, and it became the cichlid tank. Rookie, P- rookie, rookie mistake. Rookie but, mistake. But here's where I'm going to. You got to learn some way, here's, right? Here's where I'm going to tip no, my hat. No, it's called Google. I don't <laughs> understand why anybody needs to make these mistakes. <laughs> the skirt tetra lived. Yeah. They did not kill no. the skirt tetra. Okay. So he lived and the ghost catfish. Those guys lived once the Texas and the South American cichlids hit the water. So mm. that was great. The skirt tetra just stayed out of the way and then the catfish was just like on the ground or in its own place, right? Yeah, so the ghost catfish, he just kind of stayed up at the top. He was just kind of always doing his mm-hmm. thing at the top, and then the tetra was just running laps. It looked like he was doing exercise just all day. And yeah, so they, but, those guys... But that was a singleton, right? Because tetras really should be in a school. Yeah, that's so true. So that little guy was probably just fighting for his life every day in anxiety, back and forth, back and forth, right? Yes. But cichlids are territorial, correct? They are, they are. So they, like, will pick a little, like, rock cave or whatnot. Yep. And they'll just hang out there. And if you come near them, that's when they just get on a whole new level. They start chasing people around. Yeah. You know, yeah. so leaving that, now I have a 30-gallon, okay. but I went African cichlids this time. So oh, electric yellow, yeah, those are tigers, nice. mm-hmm. peacocks. Frontosas, things nice. of that nature, right? Mm-hmm. Beautiful fish. I mean, very colorful, very and the, fun. The bigger and older they get, Arthur, I didn't know if you knew this, but the bigger and older they get, they get more colorful. So they're they're the most beautiful at like full grown, like the older type fish. So yeah, incredible. Be, yeah. But I'm gonna tell you this, my electric yellow, he's an asshole. <laughs> yeah. He is. Yeah, I believe that. <laughs> he chases uh, art seen it. Yeah. He just he treats he tra- you know, tries to mess with the placosimus. Uh-huh. Yes. You know, he's just constantly. The poor little pleco is just minding his own business, trying to eat some algae here and there. And yeah. he just gets wham for the He gets back. right in his face. He'll just be sitting there <laughs> looking at him, you know. And the pleco's like, what do you want, you uh-huh. know. So yeah. we named the pleco Pringle. Pringle is the name of my pleco. <laughs> yes. That's the name of my pringle. Oh, that's <laughs> my so pleco. cute. Yeah, I mean, because my last one I named Paul. Paul oh, pleco. Paul I mean, you got to go with a P it. name, I feel like. Do you, you, know, you name your pleco? No, you know, I have um like one of those white, what is it, like butterfly fin pleco or something. Mm. It has like really, really long fins. She's gorgeous, right? Is it and a she? I have, for sure? Yeah, it's a she for sure. And then I have another one, which is a he, because you can tell from like the little like whisker type things. Okay. Arthur, I'm trying to like describe this for you, right? Thank you. Yeah. It's, it's helping. <laughs> yeah. I've never seen fish. Okay, so um, he's just a complete asshole. And he'll, yeah. like, just, like, snap at her and, like, push her around. And so there's, like, part of me that's, like, do you want a pleco, Kevin? You know what I mean? Like, I'll just give them to you. You're right? So it gets to that point where you're, like, tired of watching them pick on each other. Uh-huh. And then you just kind of want to be, like. How many how many fish tanks do you have? Listen, Arthur, I don't really want to answer that question. <laughs> okay. No, I'm kidding. Um, it's less than it used to be. Okay. Oh, okay. So there's that. Um, I have one, like, big tank and then three small ones. That's so not, by, by that's big, not a lot. Are we talking like, 75? No. It's just a 40-gallon because here's the thing. That's the I biggest got, one you have? Well, yeah, because I got a, um inherited piece of furniture from my grandmother when she passed, right? So it was, like, a piece of furniture I didn't want to, like, give up. But it's one of those, like, I don't know, what is it, an armoire or, like, yeah. a TV type yeah. one, which we don't use anymore because we have big old It was, old like, made screen. for China originally, like, you know, the nice dishes, mm. something like nice that, Nice dishes? Right? What do you mean? Like, China, Chinaware. Oh, no. We're not talking about a hutch. A hutch. Different. Okay. We're talking armoire. about like an armoire type thing where you open the doors yeah. and the doors slide into the side. Okay. And there's this big old section with no backing to it. So it's like for an old tube TV or exactly. something. Exactly. That's yeah. exactly what it's for. Okay. So in it's that section. It's not made for a fish tank, Cassie. It's too, it's too listen, heavy. Listen, nobody tells me what to do. Okay. <laughs> I make my own rules. <laughs> okay. So, 
So you open this thing up, you take some measurements, you get on the good old goog, right? And you come up with a 40 gallon and that's what fit in there. So I have this like, yeah, in. Not on top. No, absolutely not. Because up top is plants, live plants. You got to make it look like a little jungle. You know, you got to give that like live vibe. I've never seen this happen before in an armoire. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to send you a photo. 40 gallon in the uh-huh. armoire. Huh. So we're, we're talking about 400 pounds. Yeah, and that's the thing is, is that you have to really kind of check out what your house is going to hold, right? Mm-hmm. So at one point, I was going to get like a huge old 125 tank, you know, Ooh. and probably do something like cichlids or uh, maybe just like a huge community tank where there's like a ton of like those neon tetras that just like swim side to side or whatnot. Um, but then you have to put like supporting beams in your basement. You have mm-hmm. to like go to this whole new level. And I'm like, you know what? Like, I know I can get a little overboard and obsessive about things, but like there's a time to stop and this is my time. <laughs> yeah, 125 is heavy. Once, once your joists yeah. are reaching their weight limits. Yeah. You're yeah. like, all right, maybe That's I should like, rethink this hobby a little bit. Do I want to flood my house that I own? No, because who's going to have to deal with it on their own? This guy. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, when it starts jeopardizing the structural integrity of your home, mm-hmm. maybe it's a little too much. I, I mean, yeah. I was worried sick all the time with my 60 gallons. because that thing was mm-hmm. almost 900 pounds. Mm-hmm. And I was on the second floor apartment. Yeah. Granted, you know, you picture a couple of uh, burly guys standing in one area. The floor would probably hold it. But at the same time, you're just like, man, if this thing were to go... Well, yeah, and I mean, they do. The seals break all the time. Mm-hmm. So even if they don't break, they can leak. Mm-hmm. And you're just like SOL when that happens, That's right? A so lot you have of water. to like be like uh, netting your fish out and you have to be like trying to drain it out and trying to save if you have live plants. Like I do a ton of live plants. Like I'm all about like the natural ecosystem that just takes care of itself, right? So if that all happens, your whole ecosystem crashes. Mm-hmm. So this is a really nerdy topic that you guys got me into here. Well, like I like talking little... fish for sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. F- f- fish birds? I don't know about yeah, I mean, yeah, like, maybe fish is birds. That, like, uh, is that even like what, what does would, that even mean? What, what is you, a what fish you, like a, a fish, fish expert? Ex- expert? It could be a fish bird, I guess. Here's the thing though: I, I don't think anyone would. Know. I don't Actually, know. I really don't know. I don't know anything about I'm salt sure there's water. A word. It's a, probably Aquarius. What you're saying. So salt water is a different world. And I have a couple of like salt water friends, right? And they're always like, oh, Cassie, if you love fresh water this much, you're going to love, love, love salt water. And I'm like, yeah, I spent thousands on fresh water. Do I want to spend tens of thousands on salt water? Probably not. Yeah, it's an expensive hobby for sure, but it's so fun. You know, like for pets, for me, I'm just not home much. So my fish are my pets. Yeah. You know, I got the auto fish feeder. So, like, when I leave town, that thing just rotates every 24 but hours. You, but you can't always do that with the salt water because they right. have to eat more of, like, those meaty foods and stuff. Uh, yeah, I don't, I'm not ready to go into the salt water world, but at some point, yeah. I will. Yeah. Well, you should. But when you do, you have to get a huge tank because they say, like, the ecosystem is easier to maintain in a larger tank than it is a smaller one. Makes right? sense. So, it's it's kind of, in a sense, opposite from fresh water in that, in that way. Yeah. Interesting. There's a lot to learn in that department. No, there's totally a lot to there's, learn. I mean, it's so like chemistry and biology, and there's all these things that go into water testing. And I guess I just love to know more about so many different things that like when I got into the aquarium world, I knew it was going to be a lot, but I had no idea how much of like a niche it is. It's, yeah. it's incredible. Yeah. And how you really do have to like learn through f- like failing. Yeah. And I yeah. failed a lot. So I started with betas and I killed all of them. <laughs> Um, you know, Wait, like so a sorority tank, like all females? No, just just beta fish in like a like I start with a one gallon, like a it, one fish beta yep, male. Yeah, okay. just a beta, yeah, with his big old fins. Mm-hmm. Um, killed killed all of them. I mean, because I didn't understand the nitrates and, and the way a lot of the ammonia you know ammonia worked. Nitrites, and yeah. Nitrites and the way that you cycle a tank properly, mm-hmm. right? That was the thing. That's the biggest thing I feel like fish owners or fish tank uh, seekers need to learn is cycling. Right? Yeah, cycling mm-hmm. takes like a month, two months if you're going to do it right. Yep. Mm-hmm. For sure. And you might lose some fish along the way. I always tell my, my friends that when I build them a tank. You know, like our buddy Craig, we built him a nice 20-gallon. Mm-hmm. He's got guppies, mollies, tetras in there. Beautiful tank. Yeah. Um, he lost a couple along the way, but not many. Not it's gonna, many. It's going to happen. You have to be patient. And that's like the thing with being like a fish keeper of any kind. Patience is key. And that's something I've always struggled with, to be honest. Like, when I want something, I go and get it, right? So, like, after high school, I was like, okay, I know I'm going to be a dental hygienist. I started college five days after high school graduation. I was like, I got this. I never took any summers in between. Took all my courses till the day I graduated. So, like, when I want something, I want something, and I'm going to get it done. So, for me, learning patience through things like fish keeping <laughs> – is really probably pretty good for me. Yeah, I mean, yeah. There's, there's nothing like, I mean, that it's it's a healthy way to approach life is, mm-hmm. is when you 
pay attention to what, yeah. what you know you need to go after. Mm -hmm. You need to go after immediately, even if it's not going to be an easy thing to accomplish. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and that is living. Like, this whole complacent mindset, <laughs> it, it bothers me. Like, mm -hmm. when like in what way? What do you mean? Like, so, you know, making excuses to do nothing. Like basically, and, and like oh no, I, I'm I, good at that sometimes. I, though. I, I don't I don't need to go network tonight because I don't feel like it. Like oh. that's such like a cop out to me. For like, you, it's a desire. Yeah, it's well, like you you, you want to see that desire in somebody. It's not just always about like being lazy or wanting to just chill, but it's more like to reach something. Yeah, it's it's there's there's things that need to be done, <laughs> and and I have a purpose on this planet. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm out there getting it, and mm -hmm. so it's like I, I like that you like I, I went to college five days after graduating high school. Like, mm -hmm. there's something about that immediate action mm -hmm. that I I don't feel like that's the normal uh, path that people not. take. I don't, and I didn't yeah. really realize that until I started talking to people about it. Like everybody in my school, I think I was the youngest person to graduate in my whole class, and I like graduated with awards and honors. I didn't even know there were awards for dental hygiene, but apparently. Hmm. There is. So it, after going through all of that and realizing that I was not only the youngest, but these people were twice my age, I had no idea that people had worked like sometimes their whole life to get to this this level. And in some sense, it kind of made me feel guilty, like almost like I was taking it for granted. Um, not that I've ever been privileged. Like I grew up always having to, to earn everything I ever had. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't grow up with money, but um, but in the same sense, I always feel not necessarily bad, like I pity, but um, I always care for others and their success too. You know, I never like want to overshadow that. Absolutely, and it goes a long way too. And you know, I think to kind of echo off your point. You know, you knew five days after high school graduation, you're like, I'm ready. Let's full send it. Yeah. I talked to so many people, especially when I was back around that age, where they're like, mm -hmm. Oh, I'm go you know, I'm going to college next year. Well, what are you going to study? Well, I don't know yet. I don't know what I want to be. You know, and. It, there was always a pressure, for obviously, coming out of high school. You got to go to college. You got to continue education, grad school, things of those nature. But it's like, well, what are you going to study? Well, mm -hmm. I don't know yet. I don't know what my major's going to be. I'm just going to go. Or like they want to spend thousands of dollars on something in college, but have no idea if they're going to use that class or not. Right. So yeah. to some extent, I want to be like, okay, I understand that you just don't know who you are yet. But you also probably haven't spent the time to focus on the things that you think you would like mm. and then at least like make your prerequisites about something in that direction. I mean, there really are people who are like, uh, whatever, like, we'll just see where it goes. Yeah, that's just wild to me. Like, I can't I can't do that. That's what I'm saying. I, I never understood that with folks because like, well, what are you going to do? And, you know, I ended up moving out to Colorado right after graduation. So yeah. my my course changed a little bit i always wanted to be a meteorologist I was, really yep i could kind of see that about his personality can you arthur well and, and the voice right well he has like the perfect radio voice so he does there's thank that, you, you know? <laughs> it's thank like you. just textbook like very formal very and then there's arthur and i and we're just like yep 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 <laughs> yes for sure for sure um it's fun because i get to be chief meteorologist on happy friday Really? So, Tell me more about that. I don't yeah, know anything. Yeah, for, for the folks that are tuning in, haven't heard Happy Friday, go over there and, and you hear my weather report every week from Chief Meteorologist Kevin Batstone. Wow. See, he's got the ramble. Yeah. He's yeah. got the gift of gab ramble. Oh, you thanks. You know what I mean? You know, you could also be a, a traffic guy. You know, like the, the people who are in the <laughs> helicopter and they're just like reporting traffic mm -hmm. and they go on and on. You could also have that nice ramble with that. I-25 is looking a little bit backed up right now. We got two lane closures. Uh, you know, it's going to open up here soon. That's exactly what it's like. Uh -huh. Tune into the 5 p.m. Uh, forecast. Yeah. Uh -huh. Come on back in for the 5 p.m. check-in. She's wide open. You're free to speed like a motherfucker. <laughs> That's exactly. Thank you. You really nailed it. Can See, they just allow cussing in the news, please? Yeah. Like, it would make it, it, would make so it a lot more fun. Like, yeah. What if we created a whole news station? Where it was just like mini skirts, cussing, alcohol, like yes. all the things. Let's send yes. it. Would that not be the best? Deep, that would deep V's for the men. Beef. Yeah, get the beef <laughs> out there. <laughs> yes. You gotta hang the beef out, guys. Get, get the beef. <laughs> As you know, filet mignon batstone here. Hang the beef out. <laughs> so we're on to something here though, Cassie. I think we need to start a news network I mean, is what you're saying. Are yes. we gonna become a team? This is where I this is where I'm at now. Like don't tease me with No, this, this is right? oh, no. this is quite the proposal here yeah. <laughs> while we're recording, mind you. This could, could change lives. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I'm just saying, though, like, if we have an idea, like, don't tempt me. Like, I'll go full forth, uh, force uh, okay, so five days after high what's, school graduation. What's your role style. in this uh, news for? Like, what, what are we? What are you doing? You know, I don't know how to answer that yet mm-hmm. because I don't want to like give you false, you know, hopes or persona of what I'm, how, where I'm going to be involved. You know, because when I give you my word, I give you my word. Okay. But but I'm going to wow. be involved, and so that's what I know. But where do you see, you see yourself in that? deep v-neck like you're just so confident you'd rock that are you really are you really there i mean i I could even like go make it a 70s night 70s yeah and do like the short shorts and like the mustard colored Ooh, that's like a whole nother style like are we going like browns and stuff like retro theme are we going like country theme or like how what we can keep switching it up that's what i mean like yeah you keep switching it up yeah, yeah we, we got a lot to figure out here. I mean, we got to go to the board for this. And we're going to need our viewers to, to participate mm-hmm. and how this thing should go. Oh. Right. And, and the news is going to be about uh, like psych- psychology. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a psychology news station that also covers weather. So why do you why would you say psychology news station? Like, why would it be psychology? Because, because we're going to help people learn how to use their minds. And how's that just by dressing in a certain a certain theme and just what, by looking in a certain way? Or what do you mean uh, by no, that? Like, are like, we like dishing out counseling all of a sudden or what's going no, on? We're, it's a mindful newscast. OK. <laughs> OK. And the get up is just for fun. Uh-huh. But then the substance is is very valid. OK. I get what you're saying. You're like, we're fun on surface level. Mm-hmm. We can have a good time. But really, we have, like, decent stuff to say. That comes from, like, the podcast guy within you. The podcast guy. Yeah, absolutely. It comes from that, that, that side of, like, wanting to have fun, having a good time, but, like, still wanting it to be, like, meaningful and, like, worth everyone else's time, right? Yeah, I mean, if we're going to invest all this time and, and build a partnership and, and a business, yeah, you know, it has to be – it has to mean more – than what do you, us as what do you think, Kevin? I mean, there's a lot going on here. There's a lot of ideas being thrown <laughs> there's around. There's a lot going on here. That's an understatement. Right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if we're really going to launch this network, you know, we're going to have to yeah. buckle down and make some bullet points. <laughs> is what I'm thinking. Like, where's the list? Like, are they just going to start typing for us or what? <laughs> well, it's, it's up here right now, but yeah. you know, yeah. as this bottle is treating us very well, um, I'm, I'm sure more great ideas will happen. It's g- right. it's a good thing it's recorded. You know, yeah. it's cataloged. Yeah, we're always going to have a reference to it, but I think we might be onto something here, guys. I really do. Yeah. I mean, we we could really revolutionize the way that people get their news. But do you, Kevin, do you really have time for another project? Yes. Yeah, (laughs) always. Yes. See, that's the Cassie inside, like, Mm. for him, right? I can always, I can learn something new. I can always start something new. Can I be the leader of this? Sure. Can I be, like, the finder of this program? Sure. Like, can we do this activity? Why not? You know? Let's yeah. make it work. It's the Full yes sin. mentality. And that, that's, yes, how, that's that how you experience life. That changed my life, though. Mm-hmm. Like, I think it was I was 23 years old, and I decided, you know what? I'm going to start worrying less and just doing more. And I started saying yes. Like, I ended up having, like, this patient that was two and a half times my age at the time asked me to a Halloween party. Yeah. Right? Not creepy. It was, like, a normal girl and her husband and her kids and whatever. It was a good time, right? Yeah. Was that but this year? No, this was like years, years back. 23, you said. 23, yeah. So I'm 30 now. So years back. (laughs) So anyways, I thought, you know what? I don't want to go to this party, but yes, I'll absolutely be there. And I started like getting more in that habit of yes, yes, yes. You meet new people. You have Mm -hmm. new experiences. Like you just get to that point where, again, you have these individual um, new adventures Mm -hmm. where um, it really does like just build who you are. And I know that sounds cheesy, but it, I mean, I know you guys understand that. Totally. Oh, 100%. Yes. I mean, I was always, like in my early 20s, I yeah. felt like, well, Art know me. I mean, he could probably elaborate on this a little bit better because okay. he was outside looking in. Like, this guy, you know, when I came out here, I was angry. What do you mean? Oh, I mean, I struggled with anger management for many years. I grew up in New England. Use that as a little bit of an excuse, but I was so very angry. So can I ask you a question, though? Like, yeah. are you a little bit OCD with anger? With anger? Like, are like, you a little how, bit OCD? So? Are you type A? Like, are you, do you have to have things a certain way? Do you, if it's not fitting in your box of like your ideal of your plan, that's what makes you angry? Or are you just like angry in general? Like you just are a bah humbug, a curmudgeon, as a they crumudgeon? say. A curmudgeon? A curmudgeon, as they say. Curmudgeon? Word exactly. of the week, curmudgeon. Word we of the heard, week. We yeah. have not heard that one. Mm-hmm. That's a, I mean, that's a, I've never been asked that question before. Um, I think that for me, like my anger didn't necessarily stem from like OCD about things like if, if things got out of whack, I'd get angry about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it'd, be, it'd more be like, um, 
just simple stuff. Like I'd lose my shit over like the laptop not working properly oh, or yeah, that maybe, some, to us all. <laughs> maybe somebody like was disrespectful. Yeah. You know, like I just, I, I always kind of had like that caveman DNA It would come up and I would just get really aggressive, you know, and, and that's something I've been working on for a long time. I'm 30, going on 34 years old now. Uh, and I still deal with it. You know, art mm-hmm. season, sometimes I get fired up. You know, you saw me when I was at my worst for sure. When I would just flip the, I'd ready to flip a table. Yeah, you, you know? look full Hulk. That's what we call that, full Hulk. Hulk like, yeah, he's about Hulk ready to, like, rip his white T-shirt off. That's you know, right. And the those. beater would come out, don't make him angry. <laughs> the buttons go flying, in a sense. Yeah. Yeah, I dealt with that a little bit. I mean, and I've talked about that a lot in this program. Our listeners yeah. know about that. But it's it's real stuff. People are dealing with it. You know? So can I ask you a personal question, though? Yeah. And you don't have to answer this, but do you think that comes from childhood somewhere? Uh, well, I was, so I was bullied in high school. Yeah. Um, I was always, uh, short. Like I, I was like five, two. And short. Tall. You're super tall now. I know. I mean, but I'm five, two. So I think everybody's tall. <laughs> yeah. Like my first high school girlfriend, she was taller than me. Okay. And like, how I, tall were you then? Five, two. Mm-hmm. Oh, so I was your height. Okay. And like, well, you know, freshman, welcome sophomore Welcome to my year. world. <laughs> but you know, as, as a, you know, becoming a man, <laughs> yeah. um, and dating a, you know, my first girlfriend that I, you know, was in love with or whatever and dealing with that. And then, you know, the bullying and all that stuff, a lot of it, you know, what I've learned through therapy, a lot of it stemmed from that. Right. I always felt like I had something to prove. Right. Mm-hmm. Cause no one, you know, I just always felt like I wasn't treated at the same level that a lot of folks were. Right. And that's where a lot of it came from. And so carrying that coming out of high school, coming out here to Denver, very, very multicultural. I met these guys and then all that anger kind of spilled into live action. And these guys mm-hmm. were like, man, this guy is fucking nuts. You know, what, in what way do you mean? Well, I would I would say in a way that it's like, you know, you know that you can tame a bull, but it's dangerous. But it's still a bull in the end. Yeah. Like you just can't change like who he is. Yeah, I mean, but, but like, isn't but it like that's time. like the mystique to it, you know? But it's it's it's, it's <laughs> over time. It's 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 honestly yeah. just teaching people how to like love a little bit, because like when you hold hate in your heart and you're living that kind of life where like you're like, oh fuck this person, or like that person's a major piece of shit, and sure they exist. Mm-hmm. Like there's absolutely assholes out there and, and people that don't deserve my time, but it's to focus on that all the time is mm-hmm. just unhealthy, and so it's kind of just diverting and focusing on what's actually meaningful in life. Well, life is all about perspective. And I do believe that like some of my favorite words is like perspective and integrity, Mm -hmm. right? Like it's what you do when nobody's looking, like who really are you with like doors closed? And that's not like how clean you are or this or that, or how you spend your time. I just mean like, how are you willing to like take care of somebody at the end of the day? Right. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I mean, that's, that's different for everybody, but perspective is a practice you can use every day. I agree. And, and again, I think, like you said, I, I always say repetition is a mother's skill. What you practice, you believe. Perception is reality. All those things. And you get into affirmations. Affirmations. That's like a whole new thing. Uh, I love affirmations. We, we preach the hell yeah. out of affirmations here. See, and so circling back to, you know, me coming here to Colorado, meeting Arthur Raw, I mean, changed my life for sure. Showed me a different way to look at things. Mm-hmm. Taught me positive affirmations. It was like, man, you're focusing on the wrong things. You put your energy there. Like, it was an, it was an aha moment for sure. Which is interesting. Because, Arthur, if you don't mind me, like, mentioning in general is is that you had that opiate um, addiction for a long time. Mm-hmm. You didn't come from that easy fast track, you know what I mean? So somebody who comes off positive and somebody who can, you know, build others up, that doesn't come natural, you know what I mean? That's something that you choose to, to have. Am, am I right there or am I off on perspective? So it, it was interesting because even through, like, overcoming that addiction – I always understood that there's like in life two parallel lines mm-hmm. until death and you can focus on the negative or you could focus on the positive. Yeah. Both are always consistent and both are always are there. And even when I was abusing, like I, st- I never lost that, like that optimism, even though I was being a fucking moron <laughs> for the longest time. Yeah. Like shit, I, I just got hit with a bill from the... Colorado State Department yeah. of Revenue for taxes that I wasn't paying in 2017. Yeah. And so like but that's addiction. Yeah. It's it's not just like it's a bonehead decision. Like people don't realize that addiction is chemical. And mm-hmm. that's something that I think is like very underrated. You know, addiction is something that you you fight to like a cellular level. Mm-hmm. So I I would disagree with you on that that it's it's more than just you being lazy or forgetting or it just being well, like it, a, it a was decision. like it was like the it was very reactive and mm-hmm. progressive. 
So it's like you're doing it, you feel good off of it. So it's yeah. like, yeah, I'll do that again. Like that made me feel good. Right. Um, and, and through that repetition over years is where like an addiction can become full blown. And then you're like all of a sudden skipping bills to. Yeah, in you're order relying to pay for on that whole and, lifestyle. Yeah. So, but even through that, like I'd never lost like my essence of like trying to be a positive pillar. Like I, I, okay. I, I know that I, I carry this and it's. Like a, so it was a, always yeah. like what you're saying is it was always who you were. Yes. Like from a little kid. Um, I, I don't know when I made the decision that like I no, need, like, I need to like. No, like were you that little kid that was like happy? Like for me, I was dancing all the time. I was joking all the time. I was always bringing everybody up. I was always giving people hugs. Like it was just like that little flower child. Mm -hmm. And like as I got older, people had burned me. As I got older, I got made fun of for those things. Mm. Like as I got older and I was dancing all the time. I would dance everywhere. I would sing everywhere. I got called like a little stripper. You know, and then what? for me, it just like died inside, yeah. you know, because that's a negative connotation, especially when you're young. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, how who old, says like that? Like, how old were you when that was happening? I don't know. Probably like middle school or something, you know, okay. you're just like living your like little hippie self life, you know, and people just want to hate on it because it, it makes them feel uncomfortable to see happy people. It mm -hmm. does. Why is yeah. that? Well, I think a lot of people are very envious of what, what's going on around them. And yeah, they, but and like, why would you hate on that? Well, because, I mean, they're, they're so unhappy with their current lives or their current situations, or maybe they don't have the confidence to, to do dancing or put yeah. themselves out there, that when they see people do that, they become extremely like, mm -hmm. you know what, I'm just going to attack these folks. Yeah. I mean, we, we've seen it on this side, of course. We put ourselves out in the What air. do you mean by that? Like, people have put you guys down in the middle of a podcast? Kind not, of not necessarily in the middle, oh, but just like okay. the viewers and stuff like that. Oh, Anytime course, you're vulnerable, right? Mm -hmm. Anytime you get vulnerable and yeah. put yourself out there, people are going to have opinions about it. Um, and that's that just is the way it goes. About social media in general. Social media. And you know what I find is really funny is, is that people have so much courage to say the nastiest things online. Yep. Mm -hmm. But nobody can just be genuine, like straight to your face, even tell you like their thoughts, mm -hmm. like their true feelings or thoughts to your face. But they can say the worst things online. It's because that it's, doesn't even match it's up. Because they're for like me. cowards. Yeah. It's it's that's such a like a cop out like. Ugh, it's <laughs> it's disgusting. It's, it's disgusting. your ick. It's your ick. I don't. I don't that. like that. I don't. I yeah. don't like people who are surface level mm -hmm. and fake. Like, like let's get to the actual core of this mm -hmm. existence. Like, mm -hmm. let's live a little bit. Let's challenge ourselves. Yeah. And like, take those chances. You know, we have mm -hmm. to take chances. I agree with that 100. Mm -hmm. percent I mean, and you know, it's you can you can kind of label it too well this is how i grew up these are the people i grew up around because yeah. i talked to folks from the south and from where i'm from in new england and out here in the you're west you're from new england yeah i'm a new englander really yeah grew up there that. yeah that's cool big patriots fan um you know <laughs> sometimes when i get a couple few in me i start to patty wicked hide you know the Ooh, accent starts coming yeah. out yeah let it out yeah just yeah. let it out it does happen <laughs> it does happen that's faded a bit but um yeah, I mean, I think, you know, just depend everybody grows up a little bit differently, uh -huh. you know, some call it, you know, your privilege, your whatever. I grew up pretty blue collar um, and I'm fortunate for that because I really feel like it taught me a lot about appreciating hard work. The little stuff. Respecting your neighbors, yeah. you know, stuff like that. Enjoying just, the small moments. Exactly. And that's sitting on, a, like we were talking, sitting on a back porch, listening to music. Mm. It doesn't matter what you're doing or where you need to be in an hour or where you came from before. Yep. It's just enjoying that little moment of sitting on a back porch. Right? Yes. It, there's the something now. about that. Living uh, in the now. Living in the now. People mm -hmm. don't do that enough. Well, the deal is, I mean, you look at, like you would mentioned, social media, which I think you said you're not on, which is probably you know, terrific. I and kudos to that. I have a Facebook, like but it was because my sister kind of blackmailed me into the messenger part of it mm. to send me videos of my niece and nephew. Yeah. So at that point, it kind of just worked out. But I am glad I still have it because it is a big getting to know or networking type fl platform. So I don't think you can completely get away from it and not be in, in void of something, right? Like it's still usable, but I just don't actually use it for the social aspect of things like friends and, yeah. you know, stalking other people's lives and stuff. That to me is, is unhealthy psychologically mm -hmm. to always by nature be comparing yourself to other people's lives. Yeah, stop that. Yeah. yeah. Couldn't agree more for yeah. sure. I know Art, you have a Facebook, but you never use it. It's, it's dormant. See, yep. that's what I'm saying. Like mm -hmm. you have it because 
life kind of ends up needing it sometimes because you live in this technology world. Yeah. So you have to kind of be around that. I mean, you guys are doing a podcast. Like, of course, technology is your world. Yeah. And if it wasn't for the podcast, we wouldn't be on social media. Or at least right. I can only speak for myself. See? I wouldn't be yeah. on it. I, wouldn't, I, don't, I don't like what comes about it. I don't that's, like it. That's so interesting because I never meet anyone that's in my age range that feels the same way. Everybody's like, you're crazy. You don't use your Facebook. You don't have any. I don't even know how to use Instagram. Yeah. What is Twitter? I don't know what Twitter is. And like, that, that's fantastic. No, and it's simplifying life is what you're doing. It's like you're you're making it so like you don't have yeah. all these extra th- things and you know standards to meet up to. And you know it's about due time. Like we haven't done this challenge in a while. If you're an influencer out there and you got tens of thousands of people that are following you weekly Mm -hmm. and you're only posting the good times let's get real with your listening group oh heck yeah i'm all here for this go arthur go yes Yes. expose the hard times too yeah it's important and that will normalize the issues for everybody it's going to make everybody stronger together Mm -hmm. be vulnerable don't be surface level like use your platform for a reason like Mm. for your vulnerabilities and your weaknesses as well it just goes a long way. It, it, it shows uh, – that's what I fell in love about podcasting with the most okay. was the realness of it. You know, when I first started yeah, listening is, to casts, and, and, and the, especially these type of casts, right? I mean, there's so many out there. There's niche specifics. There's there's the true crimes, the sports, all that kind of stuff that's out there. But the the true sit down and talk about what's on your mm-hmm. mind and, and, you know, expressing your feelings, stuff like that, I think that we need it more now than ever because yes. we've, we've lived in such a, a, a false reality for so long – with well, everything and then COVID perfect. really threw a whole wrench in everybody's psychology, I really do feel. Big time. And, like, mm-hmm. communicating, like, their interpersonal communication skills are, like, mm-hmm. completely thrown off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, th- and I think that's what's great about what we do here is just sitting around a table, bringing it back to the roots, mm-hmm. sitting down, talking about your day, stuff like that. Yeah. There's just something about that 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 has always held such value to me. You know, growing up, coming home and having supper with, with mom and dad, sitting around the table, talking about your day, you know, that kind of stuff. Is just we don't do that a lot anymore, mm-hmm. and so that's why I love about true, you know, conversations that we can capture of, of just you know people talking about their opinions, whatever. And it's amazing when when you can get folks around a table versus like you know you said during COVID it was over Zoom or or, or yeah. social media. People are more apt to be yeah. respectful, appreciate people's different opinions mm-hmm. rather than when when you isolate that everybody's angry because it's easy to be angry behind closed right. doors and in a basement. Yeah, and I think you get kind of stuck in this rut of of what you're just feeling immediately instead of like what's actually reality around you. And I think we're all guilty of that. Mhm. Well, well it's it's an up like it's a swimming against the current battle. Uh, like a dory style, like just keep swimming. Yeah, just, just keep, keep swimming. swimming. <laughs> yeah, but no because like the the subconscious yeah. has this vortex. Mm-hmm. And it pulls in to negativity is like the natural current. Like, it, like sure. oh, oh, I'm going to complain about my day, but I'm not going to actually find a solution about my day. Like, I just, I just need to vent about it. And that, venting is fine. But here's the thing, Arthur. What you have yeah. to realize is that you and I are very similar. We're fixers. So we hear somebody's, like, heartache. We hear somebody's struggles. And we want to fix it. So to us, it's like black and white. It's like, okay, let me help you. Let me help you get through this. Let me help you cope with this. But people, other people's minds don't work like that. It's kind of like that love language kind of conversation you have. Like we just look at things a little bit different. Well, and that's that's why it's like important to just say it out loud so yeah. people know that if you want to have a positive mindset and you really want to start echoing that in, in your mind, like you have to start swimming against the current. Like yeah. it's not going to be easy. Like when we were talking about complacency and how that's like a pet peeve of mine like it, it literally bothers me when people talk themselves out of opportunities that are going to better their lives and it's only but because like why because i was super complacent for the longest time and so it comes from like your own insecurity is what you're saying it, it, it comes from my disposition of like i dealt with that yeah. and i don't want anyone to treat themselves at that level of disrespect you know like i, I was disappointing myself mm-hmm. and like embarrassing myself and how long do you want to live like that? So it's like you have to like really start swimming against the current. And, mm-hmm. and it's so easy to fall into negative thought processes. Like, am I good enough? Am I doing this good enough? Like, do I even deserve this opportunity? You know, all these kind of things. And it's like, like yeah, I Everybody do. has those demons, though. And, and that, that's the natural, naturally occurring thing. You know, so it's like we have – like it's a battle of the mind. Like we all go to war every day with ourselves almost is how I feel. Every day is a battle. Yeah. Every second you wake up, you're making decisions as to what you 
should be doing or how you should be spending your time. Yeah, to quote Arthur, I mean, you know, every day you got to put on your armor and go to war with yourself and with 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 Ooh, every. That's interesting. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, Ooh, I like it, that. It's good <laughs> because if you can't ma- master yourself, yeah. is is great. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, that that's what it is. That that's what we all want to do, right? At the end of the day, the ultimate goal in this life, at least for me, mm-hmm. is happiness and being in con- total control of my time and money. Those are my two health. biggest goals. Health, of course. I mean, that's a big one. Which also, I think, without health, how I mean, happiness and and all the other things just tend to not. Health matter. is up there. We no, take you're it right. for granted. We do it's take true. it for granted. You know, we, uh, we were talking about that with, you know, my mother's current situation. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it's just incredible seeing the surgery that she's going through. Um, How long is the recovery for that, by the way? A long time. Like months or what is the physical therapy? I mean, 100% would be a year. Wow. But, I mean, three to six months, obviously, that you're out of the woods a little bit and you can start you know, living again. But it's just incredible. I mean, the back fusions and all that stuff, she's been through so many of them. Yeah. And she's tough as nails. And she probably has a lot of nerve pain, too, right? I would imagine so. I mean, her her threshold and tolerance to pain is hard to comprehend. Oh yeah, she's she is. You are a very inspirational person, Kevin's mom, and like you're my mama too. And you're gonna pull through this one because you have major strength. Major go, strength. mama, go. Yes. <laughs> Don't make me emotional, but. Uh, oh, Kevin. She, uh, yeah, she's incredible. Uh, been a big, really, really big supporter for everything I've done, and yeah. and um, it's it's been a hard time, and I know my dad's dealing with a lot, but yeah. um, we're gonna get through this. Uh, but ba- so you talking about her like that, Kevin, just goes to show how great of a mom she is. She's incredible. Yes. For you to get a little bit choked up like that, and and to really have you know those feelings and concerns and love for your mom, it says a lot for what kind of parents you have. Yeah, they're 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 fantastic. So. Oh, well, and, and and you grew up off some, uh, and you were like growing up off the lake and stuff, and I mean, it, it's 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 crazy how much, like, it's easy to take things for granted, right? Yeah. And in life, it's just super important to like kind of recognize our childhoods, like how we came up, like how you would recognize that you would dance and like sing all the time, like yeah, we, just, we we can't yeah. let go of that stuff, like, and a lot of people don't have both parents. Like, you have yeah. both your parents. Yeah. Kevin, you have both yours. So and, fortunate. And yeah. you know what? No relationship's perfect, right? No. So there's always going to be things you're like, oh, I want to strive for this or that in my relationship. But, like, I had such a high bar with my parents. Mm-hmm. I really feel like sometimes that's why I, I can't settle down with one person, right? Because, like, I'm like, can I spend the rest of my life with that one person? I don't mm-hmm. know. And then I panic a little bit. And then I overthink things. I'm an overthinker, and I hate that about myself, Mm. right? We all have those things we wish we could change about ourselves. Overthinking right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, overthinking can be pretty difficult. I mean, I think we've all been there. You know, it's easy to get in that mind space where you're just like, is this the right decision? You know, what do I feel about this? And, you know, the more attention you bring to it, the more it's going to be a part of your day-to-day life and the more you're thinking about it. But we've all been guilty of overthinking, I feel like, especially when it comes to, like, crucial life decisions. Yeah, I've, I've thought myself out of opportunities. Like, it's like, that's that five-second rule and, like, how, like, what we were like talking about earlier. Like, when food hits the floor, five-second rule? No, or? like, five seconds, <laughs> like, like, my intuition told me I need to do something. So I'm going to do it within three to five seconds. I'm going to start taking action regardless of what it told me okay. to do. Or else my conscious is going to start trying to talk me out of it. Oh, wow. I need to practice like, o- this a little bit. I feel like you should, like, take notes and jot this down. Like, yeah. can you just, like, make a little uh, life coach spreadsheet for this? Like, this is good. Yeah. You should share this with people, like, on an actual spreadsheet. On a, a spreadsheet. Like, for real. For, like, those mm-hmm. visual learners or people who need to have a checklist. Yeah. Or, like, remind themselves for the day for their daily affirmations. It's a big deal. It is no, and, and like if you can obtain actually yeah. doing things within five seconds, like sometimes I'll like tell myself I'm like I need to walk up the stairs, and yeah. I'm like I don't want to walk up six <laughs> flights of stairs, <laughs> but you have to do it yeah. once you tell yourself to do it. Um, as an overthinker, oh, like be committed. Yeah, like yeah. As, as an overthinker, that's what I I start thinking about now. Like uh-huh. once I tell myself I need to do this, this is the right opportunity. Yeah. Then I'm like, all right, I have to do this, or I'll be like, okay, I'm I know I'm trying to talk myself out of it right now. I'm like, uh-huh. stop being a little bitch about this, Arthur. Like, <laughs> right? Fucking go through with we it. We all have to have yeah. that conversations with ourselves. Yeah. Oh, it's easy for the, your mind to talk you out of something, right? Mm-hmm. That's why we, I love the five second rule. It's changed my life for sure, and positive affirmations. You know, just every day, just there there are certain things that I run through. I'm strong. I'm healthy. I got this. I can handle whatever. Yeah. Just just you know, I'm a, I'm a firm believer, and we've had a couple guests on the program that, that don't really subscribe to positive affirmations, and that's that, fine. Really do or don't? Don't. I don't. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and that's explain okay. that to me. What do you mean by that? 
Well, maybe, maybe they just, you know, it doesn't work for their lifestyle or they don't really believe that it works oh, um, for them. There's like science on it. There is. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. there is. But, but you know, not everything's going to work 100% of the time yeah, for sure. everybody. Yeah. Um, it works for me. That's all I can say. Um, but it takes commitment. It takes that, you know, you want it, you have to believe it. Because, you know, I always ask people, if you, you know, what you tell your body, do you think your body believes it? Because I think that's, to me, where it started to make sense. If mm-hmm. you're constantly telling your body, well, I'm, I'm a piece of shit, I'm fat, I'm mm-hmm. unhealthy, like, yeah, you, it goes you just back to self worth. And I Correct. tell my friends that all the time. Like, if you don't have self worth or like self respect or self love for your, yourself, how can you expect anybody else to have that for you around you? Mm-hmm. And it's something you choose. Yeah. And it's something you just demand for yourself. Um, it comes easier to some people because they have had certain foundation, you know, parts of their life where it's helped build them into that direction. But, but really it is a choice. I mean, I've known people who have come from the slums from nothing, like total just dismay. Yeah. And they're the classiest people I know. Yeah. Why? Because they chose to be that person. I don't know. You you can choose. It's a, it's a battle and it's like, it's, it's a huge commitment because it's a daily dedication. Like every Maybe single day. Maybe it's not day. a dedication, but it's a daily desire. And the dedication comes along with that, right? Well, it's like until death. It's a, it's like a marriage to myself and my thought process. Like I'm going to, if I'm fundamentally going to change. you're like all or nothing all the time, aren't you, Arthur? As of as of the last <laughs> like almost two years, yeah. absolutely. He's intense, man. Yeah. yeah. And, and and it means everything to yeah. me. Like and, and it's hard for me to actually describe like yeah. what this means to me. Uh-huh. And when we talk to people and, and like people are like, Hey, like when you said this or like you talked about that, like that helped me get to this place, like that means so much. And that makes if we could help one person it's all worth it. But you're that person. You get, like, fed. Your heart is fed through helping other people, you know? Yes. That's that, just who you are. I, I am here to motivate the masses. What about you, Kevin? Like, mm-hmm. what makes you tick? Well, I mean, pretty similar to what Art said. I mean, you know, like I mentioned when I was uh, young, I was always wanting to be an entertainer. Mm-hmm. Did music, wanted to be a meteorologist. I always knew my purpose was to be in front of people. But maybe it was more to be, like, helpful as far as, like, knowledge or, <clears throat> like, um certain items that would be useful for somebody maybe not like the feels but more about the facts yeah i just knew my whole life i mean you you can talk to folks that knew me back home or even my parents like i was always the class clown i was always the entertainer Oh, interesting i was always that guy that just loved to to bring people something that they can relate to or something they can laugh at whatever and that's where i think we really kind of hit the nail on the head with this project was it scratches every itch of, of being a musician being a creator being an entertainer um, even though we're just being ourselves. That's what's great about it. Yeah. That's why I love it. We can just show up and have a great conversation with somebody who I just met an hour ago. But, like, is ago. this really work? Like, yes. honest. It's really not, though. No, it's this, something this you is enjoy the fun every this, day. This is, this this the, is the best part. part. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it is recording. This moment yeah. right now this is, is the, the best, best part. part. Yes. I, I would agree with that because this is my favorite part of any of my day, like with my patients or my friends or my family. It's just shooting the shit. It goes a long way. And and like we kind of, you know, touched on a few times on this app, it it just, when you can capture those natural interactions, Mm -hmm. right, not the scripted, you know, everything's great and all that kind of stuff. Or like what people want you to hear. Correct. Or what they think they should say or not say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They, what is the statistic of like people who say if you cuss, you're more honest than the people who don't cuss? I've heard that. I've heard that that too. And that people who cuss are happier. Well, oh, could, I haven't heard that. Because they, like, actually get to let... They, like, let yeah. the steam out. out. They yeah. let it go, yeah. <laughs> I can see and, that. And authenticity. Yeah. yeah. Authenticity is the, is oh, the big yeah. backbone behind it, right? I mean, a lot of folks are buttoned up, just like on social media. I want to show you everything's great, everything's perfect. There's something about having those real conversations where everything maybe isn't perfect. Maybe you are struggling with something. Yeah. And I think those things are what we need to focus on a little bit, because a lot of people are not doing well. Mental health is at an all-time high crisis, obviously. You know, coming out of COVID, people being locked up behind doors and stuck in the basements, quarantine, what have you. Things are different now. But, like, people are used to cocooning themselves in a house. They're used to relying on social media and their TVs and their phones and all these things because it's enough entertainment. But they, like, forget how good it is to be out in the world, too. For sure. And I'd be willing to – I mean, I I don't have any medical experience or anything like that, but I'd be willing to go on record to say that a lot of those folks that do just stay indoors, look at social media, look at the black mirror, a.k.a. their phones. makes you depressed. The the depression rate's got to be much higher amongst those groups. Well, yeah, I mean, that's obviously why depression and suicide is at its highest right now. It's It's terrible. It's terrible. 
get off of your phones and like look if you're gonna be on your screen for any reason mm -hmm. like just do something that is productive like listening to a great conversation people getting to know each other like yeah like that that can but, be fun but it takes initiative to find a podcast like mm -hmm. this right to actually listen to it, to enjoy it, to stay committed to it. But once you are listening to it, you're like, oh my gosh, this is so refreshing. Like, it's just people being people, being real, having a great time, having that moment and moving on with life. Hmm. Like that's so genuine that people forget mm -hmm. that that's important to seek out as well. It's true. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, it, it's, it's uh, I don't wanna say it's like a lost art because it's always been there. It's, it's a lost like sense of class. Yeah. I really do think that too. Like as much as it's important to like cuss and like say what you want to say, like class is dead too. Mm. There is no like courting. There's no like manners. There's no like uh, the, the stigmas are gone. They're, well, they're definitely dwindling away. Yeah. At a rapid pace. Yeah. For sure. I mean, and, and things are changing. You know, people are getting their information faster. Everything is, is just sped up, instant gratification. All glory, no responsibility. All those things, I think, play a factor in that. But and and who's kidding who? I mean, I'm not going to sit here and who's preach. Who's kidding who? Yeah, I'm not going to preach to the masses that I'm not guilty of doing some of these things too. Yeah. Oh, we you all know? are. I yeah, think it, that that's why we can speak on it. Yeah, is because we struggle. It's like our own demon too. Mm -hmm. Oh, for I sure. mean, how, how can you talk about the the battle land, the the war, the war zone, if you've never actually like put on the helmet and like taken some? That's true. Like you have to get like I I feel like life should have challenges. Hardship. Yeah, it, it should be difficult. Like life is not meant to be an easy thing. Mm -hmm. And that's important to remind ourselves of. Like if you're getting approached with a challenge, like I feel it's like, oh, okay, this is my time to fucking shine because right now I'm actually getting tested. Like you don't know who you are until you're nervous, until you have to overcome like you're like, that it's anxiety. Go time. Yeah. It's go time. Yeah, like until you question like, am I capable yeah. of actually doing this? Like you don't truly know until it's like you're put to the test. So test yourself. So how do you I, suggest I people that. do that? You have to be uncomfortable. You have to make yourself uncomfortable. So seek out something uncomfortable. Yes. And just do it. Yes. Just make a move. Even if you don't do it, just make a move in that direction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't go well, do it again. You know, I don't I don't think it's a one and done. You know, no. I always tell people like, well, I'm scared to do this. See, and I, I struggle with this, though, specifically. Fear of failure is a big thing for me. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a big fear for a lot of people. I, yes. I feel like, you know, when, when people step in, you know, I, I'm going to say it again. How many times have I said this quote? People generally will do more, more to, to avoid, avoid pain than they, they will, will to, to gain, gain pleasure. pleasure. And Wow, twinsies. Sorry. Yeah. I, 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 I've said it so many times, of course. <laughs> And that's a Coach Corey Wayne quote. I love this. But when you really break down what that means, right? So doing more to avoid pain than to gain pleasure. That's where the mind naturally goes. Complacency. It's too true, though. And, and that could mean, oh, I got invited out to this concert on Friday night. Oh, I don't really want to go because I might get Always me out of my go. comfort zone. Right? Mm -hmm. Always go, even if it's by yourself. Women, even if it's by yourself, just go. Yes. yes. Experience it. Send it. Yes. Enjoy it. You know what? Be safe. Be smart. Maybe just don't drink as much that night. You know what I mean? But go out. Have a good time. That's what life's about. And men shouldn't be able to do it and for us not to because we're in more danger, you know? We have to be a little smarter, a little mm -hmm. bit more Agreed. planned maybe, but we can do it too. Yeah. No, I completely agree with that. I can. I do. It's like take chances on life, but, yeah. but be – aware uh, have some situational awareness yes like just be tell somebody aware. where you're going yeah tell somebody when you got there tell somebody mm. that you're gonna text them you know when you're leaving or tell somebody like drop a pin whatever it may be tell people stay like communicating with others but go and enjoy like your own adventure mm. you're I mean it's just like that's the moment you're gonna learn and grow the most within yourself I agree and that's tough for some people. I mean, it's easy. It's easy. It's terrifying. Yeah. I Even mean, for social but then, people, but then once it's you terrifying. Finish, once you do it, right? Yeah. Like, and you're terrified when you're like, you're like, I got the gusto. Yeah. I'm going to go out and still do this. And then when you get, like, after Ooh. you get home, you're like, yeah. oh, like that was living. Uh-huh. Yeah. Right? Like you look back and it's your best memories, but it's because you had to fight for it every mm -hmm. second. And it's easier said than done sometimes, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, these, it's, it's if, if you haven't done it before, just, just challenge yourself and, and you know, like I talk about a 10 second rule, whatever, maybe give yourself an hour and 10 minute rule. If you get to this event, something that you've never done before. Interesting. I've never heard of this before. Yeah. I talk about a lot of 
goofy shit, but one of the things... <laughs> That's that, not what I meant, first of all, for the record. <laughs> um, you know, I'm just kind of picturing it live action, because I talked to a lot of people like, man, I just... They're like, I don't know how you're just yeah. out there all the time and going to those... Like, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Well, you can do it. That's the thing. Yeah. you got to change the way you look at it. And I understand it's difficult for some people that haven't done it before, yeah. and you might get out there, and you feel uncomfortable, and you feel oh, awkward. Oh, so uncomfortable. And we all do. Like I'm saying, like the most social, the most comfortable people in their own skin will feel uncomfortable in these moments. Yes. It's normal. But it's pushing through that and then finding some light at the end of the tunnel or finding that, like, gem, like that golden nugget you get to walk away with at the end of the day. Like, yeah. what did I learn about myself? Or what interesting fact can I take away from this? And mm -hmm. that's, like, that's on growth. Well, that's that's how you know you're on the right track. Yeah. yeah. It's, like, it's like you're like, ah, oh, <laughs> like, I have to just do this. Yeah. Like, that's how you know you're on the right track is mm -hmm. when you're being challenged and, like, you feel a little bit un uncomfortable. You got to get comfortable being uncomfortable mm. and it will change your life. Like it, it's, it's just promise yes. yourself. You're going to try to be in a situation where you're going to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And it's weird. Yeah. It's weird to say that, but it's, it's freeing at the same time. Cause then once you've been there and because it's so that, ballsy, it's like yeah. jumping off that cliff. Mm -hmm. Taking that. Yeah. Taking that initial, uh, that jump, you yeah. know, like like Steve Harvey says, how many times have I said this? Mm -hmm. You don't know if your parachute's going to open yes. until your parachute, or until, you don't know if your parachute's going to open until you jump. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's like, until you, you... give me Steve Harvey, like Harvey vibes, for sure. Steve Harvey? Mm -hmm. Is it the mustache? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I, I like Steve Harvey. He's a solid lad, for sure. But, um, you know, all that aside, I mean, anytime I've, I've, I've taken a friend or somebody that's maybe like, you know, a very introvert, and they, they don't get out much, and then we go out having a good time, they talk about it for the next week, mm -hmm. you know, whereas, you know, we're, we're obviously very busy. We do a lot of networking. We're used to being at events and all that stuff. So it's, to us, it's like second nature. But I guess the point I'm making is the, the good times that you can have out there, it's right there at your fingertips. Just surround mm -hmm. yourself with good people. It's right, like, at your next door neighbor bar. Like, it's, exactly. it's literally at your next door neighbor's house. That's how I bought my house. I didn't, like, get my house because I had the most money. I networked. I ended up becoming friends with a neighbor who ironically was the realtor mm -hmm. for the house that was being sold. The all cash buyer from Texas fell through and she literally called me up and said, do you want the house? Yeah, I want the house, right? So I already had my paperwork in and it was said and done. There was two other people in front of me in line. Yeah. That's life. It is, it's, it's all about connections and but genuine connections. Like you have yeah. to, you have to be authentic. Um, so we've covered a lot of great information and I feel like You've already almost answered this question, but I have to ask you what? this directly. What? Okay, so we like to ask every guest this. If you could give all of humanity a piece of advice so everybody could be better tomorrow, what would that be? Put yourself in their shoes. Every single moment that you're interacting with someone else, stop thinking about why they said it or where they were coming from or what they meant and more think like in the sense of okay what are they going through what are their insecurities or what what have they experienced today or possibly what are they needing from me maybe mm -hmm. and so I think sometimes being more respectful and responsive to the other person and and what they they need be more understanding put yourself in their shoes care about society send out a little bit more love I like that that's yeah that's that's good stuff I mean we, we have a lot of folks sit across the table and give their, their, their take on that. I like that. You know, putting yourself in someone else's shoes goes a long way because... Every moment. The small moments. Yep. When you're at that corner store checking out and you're just putting your credit card, you know, sliding it through to pay. Mm -hmm. Think about what that cashier is feeling in that moment. Mm. What are they going through? Are they giving you eye contact? Are they looking at how big the line is? Mm -hmm. Are they feeling like a little bit like sad? I don't know. But build them up. Start thinking about other people to the smallest amount. Stop honking at people when they don't go on a green light right away. Just give them a second. Mm -hmm. You don't know if their grandmother just passed away, if their dog just died. Yeah. You don't know. And that's my biggest thing. Mm. Like, have a little bit of kindness in the smallest moments. Have a little bit more patience. No, I, I feel like that's advice that should echo because whenever you – step back out of your own personal needs and what I'm trying to accomplish right now, me, 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 and you actually start thinking about humanity as a whole and like maybe your day is extremely difficult, but 
Yeah. Everybody's having that type of day. Mm-hmm. And so it, it it's it's so important. And the amount of, like, if, if you're actually genuine about that and you're uh, allowing people to, like, you're, you're looking into their lives yeah. and, and trying to see, like, the different levels, and then you just show them some love and you're like, hey, what's up? You know, and you give them some dat. You're like, yeah, what's right? good? <laughs> I'll you know, take it. Just I'll like take that. It. And and yeah. like and that's sharing love. Mm-hmm. And, and it's like that's so important to building everybody up because we're all in this shit show together. Like we, we yeah. all we all have to suffer together. And to consider that, like you're not the only one suffering. Like everyone is. And to, yeah. to just give people that space, I feel like that's and, super important. And pointing out one more thing, self centered is completely different than self concerned. And I really want to, like, put some light on that because being self-centered is a negative connotation. Being self-concerned is what we all do by nature. We think about ourselves, our own emotions, our own moment, our Mm -hmm. own plans before we think about others. That's human nature, right? But trying to practice um, seeing something through their eyes for how maybe they're self-concerned first. Yeah, I mean, it could change society in general. And mm. I'm assuming that you've been doing this for a, a while. Like, what are some of the lessons that you've learned? I learn more while, about myself yeah. through hearing other people than if I were to talk. I, I really am like a true believer in listening is, is where you learn the most about yourself. Hmm. Those are all great points, I think. I feel the same way, too. I, you know, listening to what other people have to say kind of piggybacks off of a lot of things you're like wow I, I, I can relate to that maybe I can reflect on that maybe I can learn from that and so yeah I think that's a that's a great takeaway you know just really be kind be listen to people mm-hmm. you don't know what's going on you don't know what people are dealing with Everybody's, I mean look at you and your mom right now that's yeah. a really hard place to be in it is pretty mm-hmm. tough and who would know you're going through that when you like give that great persona of I've got it all together yeah. I'm well spoken I'm on time I'm here I'm, I'm here to perform yeah I well, appreciate that. Um, yeah, I mean, and, and that's that's a good example. You know, you just don't know what people are dealing with because mm-hmm. everyone's struggling with something. Everyone's everyone's got something that going on. You know, and I think that's the thing. So mm-hmm. you know what I want to cheers to? What's that? Um, drinks giving. Drinks giving. It's it's the people you choose to spend time with the day before Thanksgiving. It's called drinks giving. So the day before Thanksgiving, I think we should cheers. Okay. To a good conversation. Yes. And uh, good people. Absolutely. Cheers, Cheers to that. To that. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much, Cassie, for being a part of our program. Absolutely. Coming on down after a long day of work, of course. Um, Hustler. Hustler. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I do that a little bit. <laughs> 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 no, thank you guys so much for having me. Honestly, it's an experience I didn't think I'd ever come across, but Arthur convinced me that it's something that I should try out. So um, I, I tried to put that uncomfortable moment into play and thought, you know, why not? Yes. What, what am I going to lose out of this? I only have something to gain. See, you're, yeah, that's a perfect example of exactly what exactly. we were just talking about. Yeah. That's something that, that the listeners and, and viewers can hopefully build on. I mean, you're like, you know, I don't I Extremely uncomfortable. Who wants yeah. to, to sit in front of thousands of people mm-hmm. and tell them your innermost, like, insecurities? But it right? feels great, doesn't it? It does. It's freeing. It's like, and you it's know like what? Therapy. You learn something about yourself every moment you, you step off that ledge. Mm-hmm. Take that dive. You bet. No, for sure. Thanks for being, you know, open with us and vulnerable yeah, and sharing some, some of your opinions me. and having a little whiskey, of course. And uh, <laughs> always the whiskey. Always the whiskey. Yeah. The whiskey's <laughs> the whiskey's the nice. Whiskey. Whiskey. Yeah, whiskey. But while while we're, I I want to like come up with a good conclusion. Okay. So what is it, Arthur? Tell us. Give it to us. Like wh- whatever you're going through, people are going through it too, and. Today can be our very best day or our very worst day, and that's happening to everybody. And so let's appreciate the good times while we have them. Yeah. Um, let's appreciate our health while we have it. Let's affirm that people will become stronger if they have an ailment. And just let's give as much love as we can and protect ourselves also as much as we can at the same time. I, I don't know. There's something about this experience on life and, like, slowly maturing as time goes on. But it's just it's it all means a lot because it doesn't last forever. So make today your best day. Like, it could be your last. Yes, exactly. It's and it's it's sad, but we see people our age all the time, you know, that that don't make it to next week. Mm-hmm. So it happens. It yep. Does. Yeah, that's true. Live, live every day. It's, it's your last, you know, and the old Yolo. cliches, you know, YOLO. You only live once. YOLO. Yolo. And as you know, 
as folks know, I'm a huge believer in friends and family make you the richest man. It's one of those. Uh, oh, song- that's sweet. I like that. Yeah. It's one of the song lyrics that uh, that I wrote with the Ridge Runners and Jamie Rorick, and I carry a tattoo on my arm that says Beyond Blood. Ooh. Family and friends are very important. It's Thanksgiving, guys. I hope you really enjoy your time with your families. This mm-hmm. is what it's about. You know, we're Happy all busy. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Enjoy your turkey. Enjoy your fun. Whatever you guys are doing, just make sure you stay safe. Yeah. We really appreciate the support here at Discussion Combustion Podcast. If you guys haven't checked out Happy Friday yet, what are you doing? Check it out. It comes out tomorrow. Um, get involved. It's a lot of fun. We're having fun over there with John Ekstrom. Um, just just love sitting down every week with Arthur Ra and some great guests. Thanks so much, Cassie, for being here. Yeah, absolutely. It was my pleasure. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, you were, you were awesome. You killed it. And everybody out there, you already know, and we mean this genuinely. Please, genuinely. Genuinely. Please be good to yourselves. Be good. You deserve it. <laughs>